Hello, check, check, check. One, two, three. Welcome to Love Em Up, everybody. Woo. No place I'd rather be on Tuesday night. We're here to listen to the good news while lots of people are sitting at home watching the bad news at six o'clock. So, and the good news is that Jesus loves us and in the, in, in the book of Romans in chapter eight, verses 38 and 39, Paul tells us that I am persuaded and neither life nor death, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither life nor death nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from that. Amen. So I love coming here. Uh, the love of God is always, you can feel it when we're here. And uh, so uh, I'm glad everybody's here tonight. Um, that love's available to everybody, and all you got to do is trust Jesus. He, he's a, he promises to save. He's got power to save. He's mighty to save, and he keeps his promises. Amen? All right, we're going to get started with the New Beginnings Band. Thank you, guys. Um, the New Beginnings Band has been around Love Up for, what, 20 years now? Yeah. Pretty close. And uh, they don't, you know, they do all this for free a couple times a month. And uh, anyway, um, they're, they're, uh, been, they've been very faithful and with the gifts they've been given. Um, we had a little change in plans. Pastor Ricky let me know on Sunday that he f forgot it was his anniversary tonight. And his wife has plans for them in, um, in Malibu, they're in Malibu right now, celebrating their 20th anniversary. So, congratulations, Ricky and Michael. And uh, so, um, I, for those of you who follow us on Facebook, um, during the 16 months that we weren't able to meet because of the coronavirus, the New Beginnings Band was faithful to almost weekly go into um, the garage or the living room and and come together and. Um, and put together a worship set for us to enjoy. And, and so we had some of Love Em Up available to us at home. And then following the music, Jeff and sometimes David and I think some others were faithful to come up and give us a Bible message too. So if you heard in those Bible messages, you know that Jeff is a gifted teacher from the Word and he's going to bring us a word tonight in Ricky's place when they're done playing music. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for this place. and. Thank you for the chapel at Grossmont and the shelter church that have taken us in. And thank you for your love that cannot fail and how faithful you are. And uh, we thank you that you show up every time we're together and you do, do business with our hearts. You set our minds free and um, we can have victory over the trappings of this world and this life and you and look forward to eternal life with you. And... Uh, so meet with us tonight and do what you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
bless you all. Love and luck. We are glad to be here tonight. 22 years and counting. That gives us the accurate number. But that's okay because that just makes me two years older. Yeah. 20 is just fine. Uh, we've been doing it with the same band here now for 11 years, except for David. He's been in and out for three years. But one of the glorious things about this band is other than retirement or moving away, we've never asked somebody to step down out of this band. That God uses the team that he gives me, and I rely on that team. So say hello or on the far right playing lead guitar to Eric. Right here playing acoustic, say hi to Melody. This lady right here hands me my water, say hello to Judy.
circumstances are. All right, we're going to take an offering. We're going to receive an offering now. So if we can bring our basket up. Or how are we doing? We're going to do a song during this offering. It's one of the band's favorites by Mercy Me. It has to do with our message tonight. It's called One Trick Pony. Now, I know there was an album put out by Paul Simon called One Trick Pony. But this one's, this one's a different one. This is about being sold out of Jesus. Being a one trick pony. Okay? You got one trick, and that trick is Jesus. All right. So we hope you enjoy this song. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray for the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for this opportunity to honor you, Lord, by bringing our tithes and our offerings. By showing you that we understand that it was all yours to begin with. We are simply stewards of your offering. And so we ask that when we bring our humble offering, Putting them in the basket with a smile on our face, for we know you love a cheerful giver. That you will use this offering to be able to expand your kingdom through love and love ministry from here to the next day beyond. We thank you and we praise you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
believe in the Lord? Do you believe in the Lord? Do you believe in the Lord?
Thank you, Jesus. Okay, we want to get right into the Bible study, so I'm going to be very brief. Come back next week, and I am sure Pastor will give you that this time. I know some newcomers are out. God has a chance to get into the Bible, and it will be sweet. It's always good. And uh, everybody here is always welcome here on Sundays at 4 30 for Shelter Church, also. Ricky brings a good word and good worship in every Sunday. Am I right, John? Ken did good. Sweet. All right, Scott. Uh, and Michael. All right, so come back next week and we'll also have worship with Lee Taylor in front. He's always, always so funny. He makes me go home and crash and laugh so hard. <laughs> And, and, and then uh, next week we'll be celebrating October birthdays. I know Adam's birthday is in October. Who else is having an October birthday? And for sure, what's, what's your name? Cassiana? Oh, Christina, okay. And what's your name? Christina Adams. Okay, we're going to get your names on the birthday cake. And we'll be having a birthday cake for snack, for snack, for snack next week. So, um, and looking forward, um, we've got a, 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 the, the last two, the last two days every month, um, a friend from Raleigh's Hamburgers, Bud, has agreed to bring us our burgers and fries. And, and we're going to ask him to remember the apple pies this time, too. And, uh, so that'll be, be in two weeks. But tonight we got cookies and drinks, so uh, we'll have those right after the word. But um, without any further uh, ado, we're going to um, ask uh, Jeff to come forward and, and uh, teach us from God's holy word. I hope so. But certainly I can't stand still. Such a great view in summary. Um, so tonight we're going to be in, in Joshua uh, chapter 24. So if you have Bibles here tonight, you can open that up. We're going to start in verse 1. But before we get started, let me see a little intro here. So we're talking about choosing tonight, right? So I know that for over 22 years, New Beginnings has chosen to be here on the second and fourth Tuesday, and I appreciate rallies. We may stick around here in two weeks. Um, but we've chosen to be here. It's a choice that we make. You've heard me say this sometimes. I'll say there's a lot of things to do in San Diego on a Tuesday night, but there's no better place to be than right here at Love and Love Ministries, being able to share the love of Jesus with you, right? Through music, through work. And so we know that we're committed. When we make that choice, we're going to be here. Um, but hey, we're banned. And bands, to be honest with you, They'll choose to play wherever they can play. All right? I mean, this is, we love being able to play, right? But here's the thing. Some bands, they make the wrong choice. Their choice to play is based on how many people they're going to play in front of. Or maybe how much money they're going to get paid. Or maybe how much recognition they're going to get. In fact, some bands choose not even to be praise bands. They choose to be rock bands. So they can play out there in the world at bars and be able to really play in front of a lot of people, maybe on TV, get a lot of recognition, get a lot of that money. So you have to not only make the choice, you have to make the right choice. And so we've chosen years and years and years ago never to ask for any money when we play. We never have. Now don't get me wrong. We don't play for money, but boy, God has blessed us many, many times, four to six times a year, we get paid. I tell them, we don't want it. No, no. God told me to give you this. So it's like funny how we don't choose to do it, we still get it. But here's the thing. I'm choosing this message to speak about tonight because all of you choose to be here on Tuesday nights. And I know that for many of you, you come in, the music's really good. You know, you, you pray on some of your events where you pray for each other. That's really awesome. And then you hear the word of God. And I know that for some of us, you know, we can like kind of like drift off when we get to the word of God. 
We don't, we're not here for that. We're kind of here for the fellowship and the fun and the music and the excitement, but not necessarily for that word of God. You know, I got a guy at our church, a good friend of mine. I mean, I've known him for a long time in church. I've gone out golfing with him. He can go four hours on a golf course without going to the restroom. <laughs> but when Pastor Phil starts to preach a 20-minute message, he's got to go three times in 20 minutes. So he has a hard heart. He doesn't want to hear the word. The worst thing about it is he likes to sit in the front row. So every time he gets up to leave, everybody goes, everybody watches and says, could you at least sit in the back row? <laughs> so we're going to talk about a subject that Joshua talked to his people about. And so if you have your Bibles open, let's get into chapter 24, verse 1. So it says, then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summoned the elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. Joshua said to all the people, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Long ago, your forefathers, including Terah, the father of Abraham, and Nahor, lived beyond the river and worshipped other gods. But I took your father Abraham from the land beyond the river and led him throughout Canaan and gave him many descendants. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I assigned the hill country to Seir and Esau, but Jacob and his sons went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron, and I afflicted the Egyptians, but what I did there, and I brought you out. When I brought your fathers out of Egypt, you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued them with chariots and horsemen as far as the Red Sea. But they cried to the Lord for help, and he put darkness between you and the Egyptians. He brought the sea over them and covered them. You saw with your own eyes what I did to the Egyptians. Then you lived in the desert for a long time. I brought you to the land of the Amorites who lived east of the Jordan. They fought against you, but I gave them to your hands. I destroyed them before you and took, your pos took possession of their land. When Balak and Zippor, the king of Moab, prepared to fight against Israel, he sent for Balaam, son of Baor, to put a curse on you. But I would not listen to Balaam. So he blessed you again and again, and I delivered you out of his hands. Then you crossed the Jordan, and you came to Jericho. The citizens of Jericho fought against you, as did also the Amorites, the Pezites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, and oftentimes I throw in these stalactites and the stalagmites, but they weren't actually in the story. But I gave them into your hands. I sent the hornet ahead of you, which drove them out before you, also to the two Amorite kings. You did not do it with your own sword and bow, so I gave you a land on which you did not toil, in cities you did not build, and you live in them and eat from vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods of your forefathers, worship beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you shall serve. And that's the verse we're going to focus on. Choose you this day whom you shall serve. And there's three parts of that scripture that we need to look at. The first part says, choose you. Now, when it comes to choosing, your mom and dad, as you were growing up, they kind of chose for you, didn't they? And your boss at work, he kind of chooses for you, doesn't he? And sometimes your friends, they like to tell you what to do. But here's the thing. For everything that God has for you, and everything that God wants for you, and everything that God wants to give you, He gives you free choice. You don't have to choose Him. Now that is a love that goes beyond all understandings. That He comes and says, I want to give you everything, but you don't have to take it. It's up to you. It is your choice. So He says, choose you. And when we look at that, it's kind of like this. If God's asking us, but he's not requiring it of us, then we need to realize that the service of God is a matter of choice. To serve him is a matter of choice. Now, it's your choice. In Romans, let's turn over to Romans chapter 1, if you have your Bibles. And in Romans chapter 1, 
1832. I'm going to read a little bit of this. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by the witnesses. Wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power, divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. For their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools, and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal men and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore, God gave them over in the sinful desires to their hearts, to sexual impurity, to the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served created things rather than the Creator, who is forever praised. Amen. When you think about that, as much as God had all these things for them, they chose something else, and God said, okay, that's what you choose, you can have it. Because you see, it's your choice. But here's the key. You have to make a choice. Now here's where we get caught up. We tend to think that there's many answers to a choice. We can say yes, or we can say things like, well, maybe. Again, next Sunday. If, when my job's, when I got a job, maybe when I know the Bible a little better. You know, when I kind of got my life in order, when my kids get out of school, we come up with all these answers, but the Bible says, let your yes be yes, and your no be no. So when it comes to making a choice, if you don't say yes, everything else you say is a no, no matter how much you try to fool yourself by tempering it with a maybe or something like that. So you've got to make the choice, because if you don't make the choice, guess what? The choice gets made for you. Okay, if you don't choose yes or no, the choice is going to be made for you. And it's not an easy choice. Matthew 14 and 18 to 22, and in Matthew 9, 9, when Jesus went up to Matthew and to Simon Peter, and he went up to the sons of Zebedee, and he said, you come, drop your nets and follow me, and let me make you fishers of men. They dropped everything they were doing to follow him. Now, I know that scripture. Jesus was looking for disciples. So he's not telling you just to drop everything now and follow him. He doesn't want you to quit your job. He doesn't want you to stop the thing you do just to follow him. That was because he was looking for disciples. But from that scripture, we can still understand that there's a cost to following Jesus. The movie Courageous, anybody ever seen that movie? Came out a few years ago. Awesome movie. So one of the fathers has a decision he has to make because this, he works at a job where he doesn't make enough money and they're, they're, they're just getting ready to lose everything because he doesn't make enough money. And they offer him a management position. They call him in on Friday and they say, okay, we want to offer you this position, but there's one circumstance you need to understand. There's times when the boss is going to ask you to kind of take things off the inventory and just pretend like they're not there. And we need to have you do that, okay? So he's a man of God, man, and he's like struggling with this. So he goes home Saturday and Sunday. He's praying with his wife. His wife's going, honey, we need this job. We need it. We can't make our mortgage payment. We can't buy food. We really need this job. But he goes, honey, I just can't go against God. They want me to be dishonest. I can't do that. And so he walks to work on Monday morning. He goes and he sits down with the boss and the boss's assistant. And they say, so do you want the job? And he goes, sir, as much as I love working here, I would continue to work here and give you every effort that I can possibly give you. I cannot be the manager of what you want me to be if you're going to ask me to lie. I just can't do that. And they both look at each other and they kind of look at him with a stern face. And he goes, I'll get back to work. And he gets up and he heads for the door. And all of a sudden, the assistant goes, one moment. Sit back down. And thinking that he was going to get fired, the boss looked at me and he said, you start tomorrow. Because that was the test. Every other person we asked to do this job said they would do what I asked them to do, that they would lie on the inventory. You were the first one that said you wouldn't. I need that type of man in the position. You see, you've got to make these choices. They're not easy choices. Sometimes you have to give up some things. Sometimes you have to give up some of those drugs or alcohol or all those things you know just aren't good for you. Sometimes you have to end some of your relationships with friends that just don't have your best interest in mind. It's a tough choice. Because the service of God is a matter of choice. It's your choice. Then we get to the last part of that scripture where it says, Choose you this day whom ye shall serve. See, once you choose God, 
Choosing God is a matter of service. The service of God is a matter of choice, but the choice of God is a matter of service. You see, when you choose God, you have to serve. Now, there's three types of serving we can find in our lives. One is self-serving. We can be self-serving. You know, the word Christ is spelled capital C-H-R-I-S-T, and that I is the smallest letter in the word. But for self-serving, we tend to spell it, whether we're a Christian or not, capital C-H-R, capital big I-S-T. Because we put I in the center of Christ instead of putting Christ in the center of I. So we can be self-serving. It's being a me, not God, perspective. And you can do that if you're not a Christian, because hey, you don't care about God. But you can also do that if you're a Christian. You can accept God and get go right on doing what you were doing. You just got, you know, I got my salvation. But see, he's not just your savior. Jesus wants to be your Lord and Savior. Savior's a one-time thing. Being your Lord is a daily endeavor. So when we look at this, we can also find that there's world serving. See, if you don't know God, then you only serve the world. And again, non-Christians are like this. Everything's about the world, making money and power and being able to be the best and everything. Run, 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 because if you slow down, somebody will take you over and be first and you'll be second. But you, you know, really, we have to realize that Christians can do that too. We can be defeated Christians. We can get our salvation and then go sit in our, there's a book called The Rocking Chair Christian. That's where we get our salvation and we go, I got mine. You find yours. And we go home and we sit. And we don't do anything to go out and share the word of God with others. So we can be God serving. That's the third line. And in Numbers uh, chapter 9, 15 to 23, you can read that on your own time. But basically this is the story of the Israelites in the desert. And having to set up uh, the, 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 thank you, the tabernacle. And it is a massive thing that takes 12 tribes to do. And yet there's this cloud that they follow, right? And they stay where they're at with the tabernacle until the cloud moves. And when it does, they pack up and they move with it. And they move until the cloud stops. And when the cloud stops, they stop and they build the tabernacle back up. And then when the cloud moves, they move again and they follow it until it stops. And then they build it up again. Sometimes it's there for a few days, a week. Sometimes it's there for one day and they move. Twelve tribes having to deal with this on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. That's following God. They had no idea, no idea where they were going. They had no idea when it was going to be done. They knew nothing about how this was going to affect their lives. And they didn't even know why they were doing it. They just did it because God said, this is what I want you to do. We're like that in our lives. We sit there, when we come become a Christian, we write down what we want to do for God. Here's all the things I want to do for you, God. Now will you bless it for me? And God says, you know, it's kind of not some of the things I want you to do. How about we do this? You take a blank sheet of paper and sign the bottom. And then I'll put on there what I want you to do. See, that's following God. That's following God. Amen. So being a Christian is to follow Christ. A Christian actually means little Christ. So we should be sanctified. What does sanctified mean? Sanctified is like becoming more like Jesus every single day. Okay? So we become a Christian, and if you don't tonight, we'll get a chance to do prayer. And once you become a Christian, that's a one-time choice. And then we're going to read scripture in a second that talks about every day we have to die to ourselves and rise up for God, but throughout the day, decisions come our way, just like that man in Courageous, where we have to continually make the right choices because we need to realize, who do we serve? Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men, Colossians 3.23. See, clearly there's benefits to serving. In 2 Corinthians 9, 12 to 15, there's this wonderful scripture talking about how serving the Lord is so wonderful to the people who get served. They see that you have a love for your Savior. They see that you're willing to sacrifice for him and for them. And they praise your name, even though they may not even know Jesus. But in doing so, they eventually look and they ask, can you share this Jesus that you talk so highly about? So the benefits to serving is that we please God. 
We don't do it to please God. But in doing it, we please God. We don't serve God to get blessings. But when we serve God, we get blessed. Does that make sense? See, our motive has to be to serve God. The rest takes care of itself. And then finally, the third part of this. It said, choose you and whom you shall serve. And in the middle, almost like a military order, it says, choose you this day whom you shall serve. You know, in another place in the Bible, it says, today is the day of salvation. It doesn't say yesterday was the day of salvation. It doesn't say tomorrow's the day of salvation. The reason is, it says yesterday is gone. It's history. It's past. You can't go back. And tomorrow, it really never comes, does it? Because tomorrow becomes today. That's why God calls today the present. Because it's his gift to you. And he wants you to open it. So, when we look at this, we see this day, we have to choose this day, that neither the choice nor the service should be delayed. Choosing God shouldn't be delayed. Serving God shouldn't be delayed. The choice should be made today. Luke 9, 23 says, If anyone come after me, he must deny himself, pick up his cross daily, and follow me. See, it's not just, I got my salvation, now I don't. No, every day you have to get up and die to self and live for God. It's a daily thing. It says, and here's how important it is in the Bible. Your love for Christ should make your love for others seem like hate. Now get this. Luke 14, 26. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Wow, that sounds pretty potent, doesn't it? But does God want anybody to hate anybody? No. no. So what he's saying is, the most important thing after me that I have is the love of family. It's the law of God. It's the law of God to love your family. But see, people can use the love of family as an excuse not to choose God. They can use the love of family as an excuse not to serve God. I know many of fathers who sit home on Sundays and don't go to church because they got to watch football and be with the family. They watch football, but they're not with the family. And I see many people who say, you know, I just can't serve because golly, when Johnny's got softball and Julie's got dance class and I've got all these other things I've got to do. And although those are wonderful things, if it keeps you from God, that's the comparison he's making. You need to love your wife, love your children, love your life. But in comparing it to the love of Christ, it should look like hate. That's what he's saying. That's how much you need to love him. It's a daily commitment. So we're going to close with this. By this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preach to you, Otherwise, you believed in vain. So if you're sitting here tonight and you're not a Christian, you're probably saying, well, you know, I can choose tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. You may die on the way home tonight. Today is the day of salvation. And so if you're not a Christian, when we pray, we're going we're gonna to give you a four-line prayer that you can pray, and you can become a Christian right here tonight. You can become part of God's family. You can bring eternal life into your life, and then you have a purpose to go out this week and share that with somebody else. I became a Christian this week. What does that mean? Let me tell you. I have no idea. But you got to come with me on Tuesday nights, because you'll hear some great music. You'll hear some great word of God, and you might become one, too. Because, see, if you are a Christian, and you don't make your daily choices to follow God and to serve Him, and you don't make those choices every single day, then why are you doing all this? Your belief is in vain. If all you did was come to know Jesus just so you can get to heaven, praise the Lord that He accepts that. But you are going to miss out on too much that He has in store for you right here on earth. Because here's the thing. His word that he wants you in. So many people say, well, I don't want to be in that because the word, it just, it, you know, takes away. It tells me what to do. God just wants to tell me what to do. But here's the thing. There is nothing inside this word that will hurt you or harm you. And all of it will help you. And the people who say that that just takes away their fun are people who have never read it. And when they read it, 
they start to be convinced. They think God is up in heaven looking down going, who's having fun down there? Knock it off! <laughs> God is the creator of fun. God is the creator of laughter. He's the creator of humor. So you ask yourself, I want to follow God. I want to choose this day. Not just to be a Christian. I want to choose this day to follow him. Die to myself every morning. Follow him the rest of the day. And then I want to choose throughout the day to make the right decisions when they come along. So that when I come to love them up, I'm going to enjoy the fellowship. I'm going to enjoy the music. It's awesome. I'm going to enjoy the snacks. That's really cool. But most of all, I'm going to enjoy the word of God that's preached to me. Because it's going to change me, and it's going to allow me to go out and choose you this day whom you shall serve, and you will serve God in a way that you've never served him before. Joshua knew this. And Joshua closed after he said, choose you this day whom you shall serve. He, cho he chose in Joshua 24, 15, the second half, to say this. But it's for me and my household. We will serve the Lord. And that's my prayer for you. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come here tonight, Lord, we choose you, Lord. Those that are already children of God, we've chosen you, Lord. And if we're not serving, we know that choosing you is a matter of service. We can't find excuses. We need to start doing it. If nothing more than to just hear the word and going out and sharing it, like just being who we are. Being, I'm going to be me because nobody else is going to be me, so I want to be the best me. I want to be the best me that I can be. And just going out and saying, do you know Jesus? Some people are going to say, no, that's okay. You dripped on Somebody else comes up and says, do you know Jesus? They say, no. They get dripped on again. Pretty soon after 14, 15 drips, maybe two or three drips, they decide to get the faucet fixed. And they come to know Jesus. But Lord, if there's someone here tonight that says, I need to make that first choice, that first choice to accept Jesus into my heart, to know that he is my Lord and Savior, to know that he died on the cross, he rose again, he sits at the right-hand side of God, interceding in my behalf because he wants to give me eternal life and forgive me of my sins, then you can pray this prayer, you can pray it aloud, you can pray it to yourself. It goes like this. Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Lord, I ask you to come into my heart. And Lord, I ask you to help me walk in a new way. If you prayed that for the first time, hallelujah, there's a party going on in heaven. This one more has joined the kingdom. And if you recommitted, hallelujah, choose now to go out and serve. This day, tomorrow morning when you get out. Lord, we thank you for your word. It teaches us. It, it corrects us. It shows us who to follow. And so to be in it, Lord, we know that if we're in the word, we will stay away from sin. But if we sin, we will stay away from this word. So, Lord, my prayer for everyone in this room is that we'll find ourselves in the word more and more and more each and every day. Choose you this day, whom you shall serve. We thank you and praise you in Jesus.